pinning them where they ought to go and hoping that I don't stab myself. Hello! Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing a thrift flip. I finally got a chance to go to the thrift store and because there was a super long line, I tried to pick up more things than usual because I didn't really want to go back anytime soon. We've got two items that we're going to transform and I'm pretty excited about it. There's this little leopard skirt thing. I'll talk about that one in a moment. Oh, what just fell off? Oh no! And a cardigan, which is already losing buttons, but it's okay because... I don't think I was crazy about these buttons anyways. Ta-da! I like the color, like the little collar, and like that it has a pretty ribbed pattern that always makes knits look a little bit fancier. A longer cardigan is better because you'll have a little bit more material to work with. And this right here is the inspo we're gonna be working off of. I got a lot of DMs for this type of ensemble. We're gonna chop it up see what we can do. After I made the completely non-intimidating, no turning back cut that is not the reason I procrastinate starting a project because I'm paralyzed in fear, I got my elastic, my sewing machine, and I got started. I have my elastic feeding in over here, and this is the inside of the cardigan, just doing a zigzag stitch to attach the elastic to the edge. Just make sure you're pushing on the fabric so that it's in its least stretched position possible. I'm not putting any tension on the elastic, just everybody in their most condensed state going through. With the second stitch, we're just folding this in once, folding it in one more time, doing a zigzag stitch. It retains its stretchiness and looks clean on the outside. Ooh. This is a pretty good technique whenever you need to hem a knit or stretch. I used it to turn a t-shirt into a one shoulder top in a previous video. I'll link it in the description. Anytime you're doing a thrift flip with knit, keep this in mind. You don't have to be like me and buy a giant roll. This was me before the COVID shut down. I panicked and I just bought as much as I could. For the inner tank top, I don't think I can go for the full bra cut that Katie Holmes has. So I think we're doing a more straight across crop length. Honestly, you could just make a tube top. But to provide a little bit of guidance, I did lean on the patterns that I had made back when I made this Paris Georgia sweetheart top. If you guys remember that video, the goal of that one was to make a perfectly fitted tank top. I thought I'd use the patterns that I drafted from that to draft the starting point. But basically, it's a front piece, got two darts in it waiting to get put in, and then I have two back pieces. First, I will put in these darts. Once the darts are sewn in, I sew the front and the two backs together with just a straight stitch, right sides touching, the side seam, that back middle seam. This makes a complete tube that, as you can see, was definitely too big for me, but we'll figure that out. It indeed is a little spacious. I think I can get rid of maybe like six inches even in the whole back. This is a sports bra underneath. I feel like the straps actually are where I would want it to be in the end. So I'm kind of just using it as a guide. I also want to straighten this out. Save that for later. Okay, after slimming this down a bit, this seems to fit much better. So then I focused on cutting away about two centimeters of fabric from the lower back so that the bottom edge could be smoothed all the way around. Once that is good, the top and the bottom edge of this tank top can be hemmed with the exact same method as the cardigan, using the elastic and doing two stitches that fold the raw fabric away. All right, I love when a thrift flip is super resource efficient. Honestly, I think these are the two largest pieces of waste fabric that came out of this whole project. I made the straps by joining the extra blue rectangles all together and I finished them off with the flipped elastic just like I did the top. I just got to attach these to this. Usually I do that by like literally putting it on and pinning them where they ought to go and hoping that I don't stab myself. And then it's done. So as a reminder, here's the little cardigan, how it looked before. And here is how it turned out after this flip. Too ashamed. 
project actually is a idea that's kind of been stuck with me ever since I did a virtual thrift flip video where I like photoshopped a thrift flip for someone and one person sent in a denim skirt which I said could be modified into this Orson Iris skirt with the corset detail and I ended up thrifting a little leopard skirt. <laughs> I'm not crazy about these rectangular skirts. I feel like they just don't. So I'm finally gonna do that thrift flip I proposed. I feel like that Orson Iris skirt is also still really cute and really popular. We're gonna start by just cutting it open right down the middle. <sighs> I hate the first cut. It is consoling that it was just $8.99, so if I fail, this is a relatively inexpensive sewing lesson. <laughs> to help me out with this transformation, I have also gathered up three to four meters of flat shoelace, about two meters of one inch grow grain ribbon, some silver grommets, we ended up using 38, a leather punch to make holes for the grommets, a matching grommet hammer, which will be used to install the grommets into the holes that we punched, and four meters of bias tape, as well as some long, sturdy zip ties. Julia helped to cut it open. I promise I was not trying to outsource the scary parts to Julia. <laughs> the easy way to seal off the raw edge is to take some grow grain ribbon. It's pinned here along the edge, just gonna sew with a straight stitch. And then we can flip it to the inside and you hardly lose any fabric, but then all the raw edge is hidden away. I repeated those exact same steps to seal off the other side of the skirt opening, so it's one straight stitch that secures the ribbon to the edge, tuck the raw ends of the ribbon under, and do one more straight stitch that hides all the raw edges away. The zip ties will hopefully give this skirt some more structure so that it looks just a little bit more expensive. That is the goal out here with the DIY, is you want it to look a little bit nicer after you are done. I used this bias tape to create the channels for the zip ties. The zip ties I used were a bit wide, so I had to open up the bias tape before attaching it. You just lift the skirt lining and we aimed for four in the front, four in the back. Julie and I tried a strategy where we pinned the tape to that top waist edge and then we marked where it needed to land at the bottom. This didn't work amazingly, but I will get into that in a second. If you're wondering why we're using zip ties, it's because this is kind of an easy and affordable way to replace boning and it helps me feel like I'm a caratures, which is also a great benefit. It's not straight. I need to add a little bit more visual guidance, I think. So as you saw, the lining made it really hard to get these channels straight since they prevent you from holding the fabric flat underneath the machine. So it did help to add a few more markings to show myself where the bias tape needed to go. And I did have to participate in my favorite sewing activity, undoing stitches. Ugh. Julia helped me out with marking the holes to be two centimeters apart, and then we worked together to punch the holes and hammer the grommets in. This blanket below is really just to not damage our floors or annoy our neighbors too much. I think in my thrift flip video, I had wondered if it would take me longer to Photoshop these grommets onto a skirt or actually hammer them in, and thankfully I found out hammering the grommets is faster. My Photoshop skills still have some catching up to do. All the zip ties can be tucked into their individual channels, and then if everything's looking good, you can lock them inside forever with a straight stitch at the end of the bias tape. This is also when you can lace up the entire skirt. I'm really not sure if Julie and I were any faster doing this with two people versus one, but yay, teamwork. And finally, you can add this little inner panel that will give you some room to expand and contract the lace up as needed. Mine is made from some leftover pleather that I had from a previous Louis Vuitton harness video. To refresh, here is how this little thrifted skirt looked before, and here she is now. And I know I can be a little bit over dramatic, but I'm obsessed with the habit of loving you. And they don't understand that every single touch is a little bit of magic. And I'm obsessed with the habit of loving you. Cause you, you make me feel like somebody, somebody, somebody. Let me know which of these two thrift flips you love more. Generally with my thrift flips, I always try to find items that are on the easier side to find at a thrift store so that you actually feel like you can apply the thing that I'm doing. Are you a cardigan with matching top type? Are you a fancy skirt? Skirt! 
<laughs> upgrade type. As usual, if you make any of my tutorials, please use the hashtag madewithwendy so I can find it and love it. I am at withwendy on Instagram. And if you've made it all the way here and you haven't subscribed, just do it. Subscribe, hit the bell notification. I think that's it. I'll see you all in the next video. Hope you're doing well. Virtual hugs. Bye-bye. Thank you.